Hey, Richard. How are you hey, doing? Hey, Mike. Pretty good. And welcome, everybody, to the Innovators Insider Podcast. We're talking Partner Show 3 here today. And I'm here along with my co-host, Mike. And we're excited to talk to our guests today, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. You know, we we were at LiveWorks and we we saw a bunch of the partners and it was, you know, quite evident that, uh, you know, we, we, we need to share more about, yeah. you know, what uh, what our great OnShape partners uh, in the OnShape app uh, ecosystem are producing to extend uh, and deliver functionality that are, you know, highly requested topics for these users and, and you know, we extend workflows into new areas. So it's there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with OnShape with these apps. And I think some of our other uh, shows that we've uh, done on partner apps have been well received. So here we have the third one in, in the trilogy so far. Uh, what, do you call it? what do we call it when we get to number four? Oh, I know. Is that the second part of the trilogy or... Yeah, it would be, we'd be entering the second part of the trip. Okay, exactly. okay. Yeah, yeah, All right, we'll work on that. That sounds great. Well, we've got some great, <laughs> we've got some great folks to talk to today and some great product, products to take a look at. So, Mike, why don't you bring in our first guest? Very good. Uh, what I want to do is uh, bring in our, our friend Stefan from Austria, who is uh, the co-founder and CEO of Principia. Uh, who does some really cool motion simulation with OnShape. And uh, welcome to the show, Stefan. Hi. How are you doing? Just Great. It's good to have you here. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time, especially late at night over there in Austria. And uh, we're thankful that you came on the show. Thank you for having me. Yes. So so tell, tell us a little bit about... Um, Principia first, I would say, and then, then we can get into, like, you know, how you... Uh, how you came about to to develop this kind of product and, and the things yeah. that solved and, and all that, yeah. So Principia is, uh, yeah, the names uh, somehow related to, to Newton's Principia. So first of all, it has something to do with Newton's um, book. And uh, yeah, Principia is, call it my, my baby. Uh, it, what's, yeah, what I've done so far is some research in multi-body dynamics and Principia is an app for OnShape uh, that allows to do dynamical simulations with uh, OnShape assemblies. That's basically all. So that's the that's that, that does. <laughs> no, hey, I'm sure I'm sure that he says that's all there is. I'm sure it's probably more exciting than you're letting on, Stefan. Uh, before we uh, before we let you show us uh, some of this cool stuff. How about your background story? Where do you come from? You know, where did you get your start in this business? Um, so I'd say um, I'm an engineer, but I'm an, an, an enthusiast uh, for multi-body dynamics. Uh, and I've been, I think, at the age of 15, I searched for multi-body dynamic solutions. That's the reason for it is uh, I've, I've been engaged in an in a, um, off-road race car team and I searched for yeah, software. It was quite hard to find anything I can uh, uh, use because, yeah, without any knowledge uh, of, uh, yeah, Newton's laws, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's quite hard to do this. So that's why um, I thought study mechanics, um, and then it was not enough. I did a PhD in mechanics and joined a research group for multi-body dynamics uh, at the. Up Austria University of Technology, and uh, yeah, there I seen so many different things about multi-body dynamics, and I yeah, wow, got so that's to, a... to know so many things, and that's why I thought yeah, I have to found my uh, uh, own company. I found some friends and co-founders, uh, and that's the thing we are we are here right now. So we have our app, and we have our own solver and we yeah, we can run multi-body simulations with it. Sweet. So that's a, that's a nice tip for our younger listeners out there. If, uh, if you can't find what you're looking for out there somewhere, you have to go out and we create it yourself. Know. Yeah. Good for you. That's, that's it. Awesome. Now, what kind of race did you say you were involved in? It's, it's, I think it's, it's not known so far. It's, it's out across. It's uh, kind of, uh, yeah. So off-road, buggy, but not the, the things running at Baja 1000, but uh, other ones, we are running it on, on race courses. 
Right, right. Um, so obviously, you know, multi body. Yeah, on, on race courses, I, I'd say yeah. on, on off road race courses uh, with a thousand meter length, so not not a mile length, it's a sprint. Okay. Paris and yeah. Okay, sounds a little bit like our event we have here in Baja, uh, Baja, California. Yeah, big off road. Similar, race. but yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you would, you know, obviously if you could figure out ahead of time, how to do some of the simulation of the multi-body dynamics and the joints and springs and dampers and, and all these kind of things ahead of time, you can optimize, you know, your design for these types of equipment. Right. So, so exactly. tell us, tell us a little bit about, you know, for, for the audience that might not realize, you know, what kind of uh, simulation is required for this type of you know, mechanism design, right? You know, maybe if you could break it down in very simple terms for, for everybody, yeah. that would be great. <clears throat> so first of all, multi-body dynamics is very useful, very useful when you're searching for uh, loads that, that, that actually uh, act onto your system because with finite element analysis, you can do, uh, you can run analysis and, and search for uh, the optimal design of parts itself. But if you think about an assembly or a mechanism that is uh, that undergoes uh, rigid body mo motion, so uh, uh, quite nonlinear types of motion, then you have some problems when you're running finite element analysis. And in multi-body dynamics, you can do this, um, and you can also get out the the, the loads, the, the interface loads, and then you can do probably or you can run. Uh, some finite element analysis on on a part afterwards, or you can also do some uh, dimensioning of parts like uh, roller bearings, uh, screws, and other type of joints with the forces coming from it. So it's kind of dimensioning, but there is also a field of application when you want to optimize motion. So there's also the, the huge part of inverse dynamics when you want to compute some, some inputs into your system when you already know the, the, the output, the desired output. So think about the trajectory of an automation system, of a robot, etc. So this is also uh, a major part where you want to do it the, the inverse direction. So you have desired output and want to compute the input for it. So that's two fields of applications for multi-body dynamics. And, uh, you know, what kind of uh, industries typically, you know, require or, or could take advantage, you know, of this type of simulation? Um, primarily, the automotive industry came up with multi-body dynamics. So that were the, say, the, the enablers for, for uh, multi-body dynamics. But right now, I'd say, yeah, it's it's classical machineries or, or standard machineries could also do, deal with it because right. when you think about some machines uh, in automation in the automation industry they're also moving very quick and you probably want to, to dimension uh, a, a motor or a gear drive that there's also a need for computing uh, the motion in order to do some other dimensioning so it's also in industries where, yeah, primarily where, where, where speed times mass <laughs> uh, plays a role. So if it's uh, if there's a um, um, yeah, if there's a, a load coming from the motion itself, it's always very interesting to to investigate multi-body dynamics. Very good. Very good. So you could figure out also perhaps, you know, what type of motor is required to drive a, a system, like the horsepower yeah. required, or perhaps, uh, you know, what type of, I, I think that's probably the first one that comes to mind, but, you know, are there any other kind of things that, like, you, you could optimize cycle time on, on a piece exactly. of machinery, right? If you have, a, uh, uh, um, if you already have chosen a, a motor for a, uh, parallel robot or something else, you could optimize cycle time because you already know the limit of the motors, but you could uh, just increase uh, uh, the speed of your trajectory and then look if the, uh, the motor is, is, is in its limits or it's below. 
That's yeah. So you could also optimize this one. So yeah, if you could make 50 parts per hour more, you know, that might be a big difference for your company and delivery and schedules. Yeah. That, that's a, a big value, I, I think, that people can look at for, for doing this kind of simulation. It might seem like, oh, I already know how to design this machine, but you know, let's be agile. Let's let's kind of branch off and try to figure out if if we can get better and optimize uh, our designs uh, more. And this this type of software gives us that uh, possibility. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Maybe we can take a peek at it. Yeah, let's take a look. Sure. I'm getting all excited now. <laughs> so um, I've got a I prepared a little model of our RC car here. So it's a suspension system, obviously. Uh, we are working in the um, on-shape assembly and we are taking over all information about parts and, uh, and weight features. And if you open our app, this looks like that here. This is the modeling view where you can see uh, which bodies are included in the model. You can also do some overrides. You can check the masses here again, or you can... Uh, um, activate and deactivate those bodies in your uh, dynamics model. And then some very interesting and important thing is here the, the constraints section. So constraints generally are those parts that join our parts together. So we call them constraints here in Onshape. It's called the mate feature or the, yeah, those type of elements here. And in some cases you have to overwrite on shape made features. This could be the case for uh, some redundant constrainings uh, that can show up in a, in, a, in a kinematic model like in the on shape assembly. But there's also a, another really interesting thing. You could also be interested to change the behavior of a made feature of on shape to think about a hydraulic cylinder. And in, in, in Principia, we can do this. So we can say, this is a slider joint. So uh, where do we have it? Um, if you have a slider mate, you can say the free degree of freedom um, should have the behavior of, um, of a hydraulic cylinder or a damper of a, of a suspension strut. Mm -hmm. Or the same could be for if you want to impress a motion and say this is a motor that gives a predefined angle over time behavior. So this is the section where we say these are the constra constraints where, where you can do this overrides. And the nice thing is if you change something in Onshape, this is also updated again. So the overrides are stored in our system and then you can also work with with an updated model that, that's fantastic stefan i so just to to step back just for a second all the mates that you design on shape models with uh, will come over into yeah. this application so you don't have all of them come over uh and you yeah. can decide if you want to use them in a dynamics model or not mm -hmm. uh, in future this is nothing currently implemented but in future you can also decide hey this is a ball joint in your in your kinematics model in on shape because you want to see how the kinematic kinematics work and in the dynamics model you want to change it to a, a a rubber pushing for example so mm -hmm. a force element that has some some compliance that yes. also allows that the system uh, vibrates um, and it 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 just hit one button and say change from a ball joint to a rubber pushing that that's fantastic. They're allowing you to to try out more things, and once again, to be more agile. That's great, and and the ability to like have like you know early on in your design, set it up, you know, with your kinematic mates, with your stable references as you're early in the design. You're just getting going, making sure things are gonna sort of kind of work. Then you can start really diving in further to to get you know, more information to help you make better decisions, right? And, and yeah. having, that's that's a great way of doing it, Stefan. I'm, we'll keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> the, 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 the points now, so the, 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 the bullet points say is, uh, the forces and sensors are now some, some, uh, is some additional information for our multi-body model because, um, yeah, 
forces are needed in on-chip simulation. Yes, that's true, but we right now cannot work with them. So we have our own forces and currently we allow to add a full type of forces. So we have a constant, a sinusoidal, a spring and a bump stop force. And this will be enhanced in future with uh, many, many other kind of forces. So think about uh, a tire force or uh, some, some guidances with, uh, with uh, a shape, etc. So, so these are all just and, programmed in, you, know, you don't have to like draw the curve in or import X, Y data or anything, right? It's, yeah, you can yeah. just import or we, we thought about making it with, an, with, uh, with on-chip variables, but yeah, nothing fixed right now. So you can import some, some curves um, from a spreadsheet and then just work with, with yeah. those. Yeah, that's great. And what, what's also cool here is the, the interaction with on -shape. So you can also pick an on -shape in the assembly. So if you click on the picker, you can uh, search for uh, if there is any. Yeah, you can search for them and then click on them. I don't do it right now because then I just uh, destroy my model here. But you can <laughs> click on it. Uh, and then you, you have your uh, mate connector here in the list. So because in this element here, you need an action and a reaction point, and then you can just uh, click on it and have the information from on chip right here. Mm. Right, and then when you are finished with modeling, you can do the settings. So a very little amount of settings, time step size. So how many points you want to compute in time, or how, how fine you want to have the resolution. There is a time stepping, uh, an, uh, automatic time stepping uh, in the in the back end, so in the solver, but this is only the, the, the time step size you want to see in the result. Um, so the solver can uh, go find, uh, can, can do more steps, even more steps behind. And then the duration of the simulation and some gravity information if you want to have gravity and if if you want to have it in which direction you should pull it. Yeah. And when we're finished, we click start and the cloud server is getting warm. <laughs> uh, and then you should have a result in a few seconds. If not, I use another result <laughs> now. So it's <laughs> finished. <laughs> Uh, and then we should see. It was great. So you, you've offloaded the, the heavy duty computation. Uh, so it's not yeah. in the user's computer. And, no. uh, that's, and yeah, that's in the, in the cloud. And then you have your results stored in our database. Uh, and right now you have the animation window of it. So we also load all the, the graphics information from the on shape model. And then we have an XY plot where we see all the information about parts. Uh, so the position of the parts, then the position of all the constraints uh, or mates during time. And then also the information about forces and sensors. And something very important is if you click on a, a mate feature, so say it's the ball 26 here, you not only see the position, but also the force vector. So the uh, interface forces, uh, which act onto the first body of the constraint. Oh, wow. Uh, in this case. And that's the, for the first, first use case of multi-body dynamics. So you now have some, uh, some loads you could apply on the finite element model. And if you wish to export the information, we implemented a feature where you just click on one time frame. And then you end up with the forces being loaded into a variable studio in on chip. What? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, <Yes>. wow. <laughs> that, that makes sense in a, in a uh, yeah, the, the workflow because now you can just do the finite element an, uh, analysis. Uh, then you have some conclusions. Yeah, I should change this and that. And then you go back uh, to the on chip model, change it, mm -hmm. update uh, the Principia model. Um, so 
it says we are up to date, but if you change something, a position or uh, a, a part itself with the mass, um, then you have to update it. And all the forces and sensors uh, are set, are already set, because you already have done it. And you click run the simulation, and you are in the yeah. loop and can do your iteration. Yeah, you have the whole closed loop process there. This is That's fantastic. Wow. I didn't know you'd do, you could do that. That's fantastic. That's great. Wow. I am I, I, I need to use this more. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. And uh, you know, well implemented to, you know, it's right here in front of you, right here natively in your on shape environment. You know, you're in the app store, correct? Well, currently we are not in the app store, but we are releasing uh, the app uh, in June, so by the end of June. Um, so only one month to go, and one then month. all Great. of you can have it. And we are right now in a, in a test phase where you can subscribe to our alpha testing group. So that's great. If you go to our website, you can uh, subscribe to it, and then you can already test it. Mm. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely give it a give it a look. It's a very impressive. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of motion simulation over the years, and and have it. You're right here in your environment. The way the on-shape mates work make it very easy to, to bring in the, the mates on your side, which is fantastic. I'm glad you took advantage of that. Um, having all the, the, the curve information and power and charts and plots are just just great. And, and it seems to be pretty fast. I mean, interactive. You know, it, it's, it's really... Uh, I, I really enjoy the, uh, the whole workflow of it, you know. It's, Although uh, I, I did notice that it didn't seem to be fast enough for Stefan. You can, you can always, yeah, it, it, you, you, you know, you see that little spiel, that little wheel spinning, and I could see you moving your mouse around. It's like, oh my, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a good developer to do it that. It wasn't too yeah. fast. Maybe, maybe <laughs> the servers in Europe here are, are in, in, a, in their night shift. And they're, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm with Mike. I think it loaded extremely fast. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with it. I've I've seen lots of simulations like this over the years, so it's uh it's very nice. It's very nice, and uh, I'm so happy our on shape community will uh, soon have this in the app store, and you can t you know go to the uh, website now and, uh, and see if you can try it out yourself too. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. All right. We'd be happy to have some of you uh, as an alpha tester in our. Oh, Test perfect. phase right now. Yep. Well, everybody, you heard you heard Stefan. Head over to the website. We'll put that up there one more time here. And uh, I was there earlier this morning. I believe there's a tab that says Alpha Test or Alpha something yes. or other, and you can probably click on that and get to where you're going. So, Stefan, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. Uh, real, really impressive product and a great demo. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it in the App Store when it gets there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, Stefan. Bye. All right. All right. All the way from Austria. Good stuff there, Mike. Very good. Very yeah. good. I'm very impressed. Um, yeah. I, I noticed you were a little surprised too. What? <laughs> no, the variable studio connection. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good the, stuff. The whole closed loop process of the, you know, you, you get the data, you, you, the information comes out, you use that to, to feed your next iteration, right? It's just, uh, I like it. <laughs> so let me ask you, Mike. So we, you know, when we talk about engineering, we talk about manufacturing and how to get parts and products made and everything. And obviously the 3D model is very, very important to that, or as are the 2D drawings. But what's the number one most important thing to get your assemblies bought and manufactured? I think it's the bill of materials. I think you're right. And we've got a guy that knows all about bill of materials with us today. And let's welcome in Oleg from Open Bomb. Oleg, good to see you again. Good to see you guys. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Great. Great. Well, I'll tell you what, let's start off, Oleg. Let's, uh, why don't you let the uh, let our audience know a little bit about yourself, where you come from, uh, what you've done in the past, and what you're doing today. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I've, I've been involved with uh, what is called PLM for the last 20 plus years in different companies, in different places. But I think what fundamentally brought me to PLM space is uh, uh, the excitement about data. Uh, you, you know, it was very interesting. I was looking on the previous presentation. And as engineers, we are all excited about the process. It's like, we can do simulation. We can do all this stuff. Show me someone who 
can be excited about data management, not about <laughs> data, about data management. <laughs> hey, we, we, we all want to, want to be transparent, like bring me data, don't talk to me about data management. So that, that's why I am for my life. I was always hesitant to speak after someone who show visualizations in cat's face and simulation, because those things are super cool. You know, you see all the spinning, all this flashing, all this nice, and then you come with the tables and say, here's my, here's my product. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it is very important though. I mean, it, it's yes. as, uh, as Richard alluded to, I mean, you know, you're not gonna be able to get anything made or bought if, if you don't have the data under control and, uh, you know, let, let, let me run. Let me run a little bit contest here. So if you, if you know, do you know what is xeralic? Tell, tell me again, Oleg. Xeralic. Xeralic. Yes. What? Yes. What, tell it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting. Like I didn't know this for some for, for, for some time, but it's a very interesting pigment that you add in the in the car color to okay. make it shiny. So what happened is that the almost 90% of this uh, stuff is done in the single plant in the world, which is located next to Fukushima. So when the disaster happened for quite some time, no one in the world, very few companies were able to produce cars with a particular date, with a particular color. So it's kind of, kind of thing, you know, if you think about this, where the data is really important, if someone would be knowing this before, and again, this is the big, this is the big event. But now think about manufacturing companies. They are experiencing some sort of xeralic moment every day, every moment, every time they try to do something because something is going wrong and something I wish I would be knowing that this part will not be available. I wish I would be knowing that this will be more expensive. And I wish I would be knowing I need to order this one. And I don't know. I didn't know that I need to order this in sufficient quantities. So that's, that's, that's how I sort of come into this uh, in the, in the prism, prism of PLM. For many years, PLM was about how to control data. So what excites me the most is how we can get value out of data, how we can um, get the power of data harness, how we can bring this data to action. And that was the fundamentals behind the creation of OpenBOM and some businesses that I've been doing before. So it's how to bring data that can help to engineering companies, how to bring data that can help manufacturing companies to, to, to do their stuff. And so, as invisible as possible. So, you know, you've been involved in this for, for, for some time. Like, what, what gets a person like you involved in like this type of data management and PLM and working this way? Like what event in your life like made you go down this path, right? This is a like, you know, it's a very interesting path, I think, and a very important path. Thank goodness. But why? Why, why would somebody get into this? Like I, I, I it, it's always an interesting question to me and it. <laughs> and I think you'll. Have I, I I was I was excited about uh, real stuff that you can make. Like my 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 father was mechanical engineer and he was designing many things. So that's that's where it probably started. He was taking me to all these machines, to all these factories, and all these places. And then and 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 and, and then I was studying mostly math and physics in school. And then and then you think how to combine these all things together. Mm -hmm. Somehow I landed up in the place of the civil engineering where people said, oh, can you, can you simulate this stuff? Here we actually can, but what data you can bring about this? I think that was very, very long time ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think what was, what was very kind of excitement uh, for me and was very interesting when I've seen how hard is this. So I was coming, I was coming to places and people said, oh, data management is hard. It's data management is hard. And then, and then I've seen Google and I said, oh, wait a second, it is hard, but it's simple. So that was, that was kind of my aha moment probably 20 years ago. And I said, why, why, why we cannot make it simple? I think since, since that time, I'm trying to make it simple. So I think with the mixed success, some of the things are getting much more simpler now. And as we can see with the thing that we do now, it's much simpler than 20 years ago. You don't need to install anything, you know, you don't need to configure so many things are much simpler. Mm -hmm. But 
many things uh, that they, they, they are not okay so and that's i think you know if you think about this like 20 plus years ago 30 years ago when i went to the trip to europe i was taking a book and it was called maps right and I, i'm sure you did the same mm -hmm. so now we don't we just need to take where's my phone so i need to take it with me and then and and then here we go everything is inside so that was a 30 years digital transformation of driving process if you think about this mm -hmm. so now we are going now i think we are in the middle of digital transformation of manufacturing so think about this. I, we can predict that if I leave now my house to the meeting, I will be in like 40 miles with the precision of one minute, regardless what is happens. Traffic, rain, snow, almost. Okay. So why we can be the same in manufacturing? What, what we don't know, what we didn't connect about data that we cannot say, oh, we want to develop this. So we want to, we want to ship this product. And they get a lot of data together, but we can ship this product with predictable price, with a predictable cost, with the process time and everything. I think that's I think this is what was the most exciting moment <clears throat> in the manufacturing, as I can see it, because it's all connects together. And that's why I have, when we started Open Bomb, it was about how to create a data platform that can absorb all data, that connect all these pieces of data, and how that can help manufacturing companies and again we call it we call it digital threat platform and i know digital threat was the most used word in the life works a couple of a couple of weeks ago <laughs> so but but here's let me let me bring you one case like what is the minimum viable digital threat oh so when you, when you have... <laughs> say, that again. say that again minimum viable digital threat so you, right. come to, you come to the company that use on shape and they say it's so cool, you know, it's so great application. We can use it and we can design it. And when we like everything is fine, right? And now we need to order parts. And now we can export it to Excel, right? <laughs> and we can save PDF files and step files and yeah. send it to someone. And oh, wait a second, we forgot something. Oh, let's send it again. And then someone who is doing purchasing. Uh, need to order this and then he makes mistake and goes, wait a second I ordered it last month and we probably already have it but I don't know how many we have so you think about all these processes it's a mess and so the, the digital thread here is between engineering that knows how to do it and the help of tools like Onshape knows to do it even better and between the other part that need to manufacture something but they are disconnected so they 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 communicate like 30 years ago, right? 40 years ago with all these things. So that's what connects people. So when we first came to companies and to customers, we said, oh, you know, BOM, we do BOM. Like, nah, you know, BOM is a tool. What we do is that we help you to purchase right parts at the right time. So that's, that's, that's how this digital thread connects things. And again, the same thing's happening with them in the, in the larger companies as well. But I'm just bringing the simplest case of digital thread is how to connect things live so that's that's what we do that's what we do and uh, right. that's, that's can, the whole can, that's the whole point yep can we see it in action oleg absolutely okay so let me let me click on let me click on the share screen i practiced it before i hope i will not <laughs> screw this up again <laughs> all right so i think they are coming here That's how every company looks. You see, this is how you do stuff. That's that's is how it looks. It's all these things are. But okay, let me just let me just bring uh, on shape. So here is a here is a very small product. And again, you, you you need to excuse me. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I like all these people that come in and say, no, I can I can deal with this, but this is not what uh, my um, best skills. But now, if I have this assembly. Uh, Open bomb is available uh, in uh, integrated in Unshape, and if I'm bringing Open bomb, what we start doing, we capturing data. So we capturing data, create files, update information. So we end up, as you can see, for the small assembly, we end up with the all information that we need. So the the important thing is the Open bomb platform. It's flexible and it captures everything that you have. Like there are, of course, some settings and you can pre-configure it before. And obviously I did it before and I said, generate step files and generate PDF files and do this and this. But fundamentally, 
you're getting in the bill of materials and the product, they capture all this data. So I captured it, all these visuals, and I kept captured it, uh, step files and STL files and all data that I wanted. And I captured it all uh, drawing files and I created PDFs. So that's, that sounds like, okay, we can probably do it in di many different ways and probably open bomb is nicer than some others, but what is the point? What, what, what comes next? Okay. So what comes next is that I can take Again, just uh, I will take a little bit more real estate screen. So what I can take and I can start working on this to, and uh, you can pay attention on some additional information that OpenBOM is managing here. So we manage, for example, vendors from whom you can order uh, the component or if it's assembly. So there are some additional data is coming, but let's focus on this vendor information. So what OpenBOM helps you is to organize the entire process and let me to show this, let me just uh, jump to our documentation. It will be visual for production planning. So what OpenBOM helps you is we are in this stage. We collected data from CAD, we collected parts, we collected information, set information about vendors. So we are at this stage. So what do we want to do next? We want to make an order and OpenBOM allows you to make this order and allows you also to manage inventory means how many components you have. How many parts do you have produced purchase orders? So let's jump back to the same screen where we've been now. And you can see this order command, which now I'm going to make 10 devices. So I make a planning for 10 devices. If I go to order, so OpenBOM is generating this order and make calculations. So you see we have quantity on hand, which is inventory. And I see this component, I have enough, but this component has gaps. So we're getting gaps calculated. Now, if something will change in the uh, model, in Unshape model, Open Bomb will be able to update an order and recalculate it again. The bomb will be recalculated, data will be recalculated. It's all happening, it all will happen seamlessly. Now, at the moment of time, I am satisfied with what I need or I'm ready to buy components, you know, long, long lead items need to be ordered uh, before time. I can create purchase orders. So purchase orders will be generated. So I get these uh, <clears throat> components that were generated and I can export this information and send it to anyone else I want. So if you think about this, uh, the information is coming to orders and in this orders, I am getting everything what I need and I can export this information and send it. I can share it in real time uh, OpenBOM supports all these similar mechanisms that you're familiar with Onshape. So I can share this in real time. I can allow it to someone to work on this in real time. I can share purchase orders. I can share orders. But I can also make a very simple export. And again, making exports, someone who is not in digital age, but it's important. So I can get an export, multi-level structures, including it in zip. I can decide what information will be extracted. I decide what is the format that I will be extracting, go into export. This information is coming out. Take a look on this. We're getting all zip file with all files included, all step files, all PDF files. What? Bill of materials. Yes. You know what to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's it. You see, it's seamless. So you didn't like remember the beginning of conversation. So we, we've been, uh, we don't need to do all this work. It's all, it's all done and that's seamless. So that's, that's about how to connect people. Again, I'm getting back uh, to this diagram. You know, this whole complexity is removed because the connection is digital. And I just want to bring this uh, example with some stories from our customers. I, that's, that's my favorite. There are so many stories of OpenBOM online. You can go on G2 and see them, but uh, this one is actually my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, it's someone who is using Onshape. He called the OpenBOM and Onshape as a perfect duo because Onshape is a single source of truth for CAD design and OpenBOM does the same for production planning and purchasing and inventory control. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's the point. Connecting processes, connecting processes using data, and uh, helping to people to be smarter 
I think that's 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 the main point of Open Bomb. We have so many new stuff which is coming very soon, and again, we continuously bring new production releases. So I'm not trying to cover all features and functions now, but some really cool stuff is coming, like graph navigation of data uh, will be coming. I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to talk about this in the future. But so far, I think just connecting processes and making people to get the right data at the right time in this yeah. process is, I think, what is Open Bomb is about. Well, Open Bomb's been a great partner of Onshape over the years. You know, you've been a great friend of ours, and uh, you know, it's always been a. Uh, it, it's always you always have something that the Onshape community can definitely use, right? You know, it, this is this is not just like a, the same as like you know. I love how you positioned it earlier. Like you know, sure, Onshape has a bill of materials. You have a bill of materials. You have some cool things in the bill of materials that are really awesome, like the thumbnails and the links to things and everything, but. The real thing really starts once the information starts flowing forward, right? And you can do all the things with the information, and it's much more than just the, you know, what people consider is the static, you know, kind of bill of materials, right? You know, it's it's a living thing in your system, you know, it, it appears, you know. And, and let's keep reminding everybody: single source of truth. I think that's really, really important, and and I think it's overlooked sometimes because you can connect all of these departments together. But if you're passing files back and forth between all these these uh, these departments, you're likely to end up with duplicates. Things get lost. So single source of truth. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yes. I I, I I like to say I think John Hirschick is always saying that we just started. So I think that was his continuous message with uh, Onshape when Onshape was started. So what I want to say, we just started with Open Bomb because the things like Bomb Copilot will be coming, and there are some interesting intelligence will be coming. So we are we are getting smarter with data, and that's that's really the most important thing because nothing not nothing can at least for me nothing is more exciting like to see how we can get some data and become smarter. That's why we that's why we like all these tools like starting from Google and then continue to all others. Yeah. Yeah, and I like, you know, you, you replace, you know, they're, the things that you're looking to replace, like, you, you know, that customer that you presented, you know, they were looking to replace Excel, right? A lot of people are just still using Excel for all this stuff, you know, and this yeah. is obviously far and away, you know, better than that. And uh, you can uh, address like, you know, 80% of people's needs, you know, that are just coming from Excel and, and looking for something that that gives them guidance and, and a flow and reduces and error. power. More power, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Right. That's right. good stuff, Oleg. We really appreciate you coming on and sharing with our audience. Um, Thank you very much for inviting me. Your, uh, Always a pleasure. Yep, throw your website up there one more time for folks. Head on over to Open Bomb. Uh, you are in the App Store, correct? Yes. And I people think can find from you there. the very early beginning. Yep. Yes. There you go. All right, Oleg. Thank you very Thank much. You. And thank uh, you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I'll be back on the show sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Well, that was very good. And that, yeah, and we're another what out of me, you know, I mean, that yeah. was really cool seeing all those, uh, that data exported and the zip folder, step files, everything, you know, the whole kit and caboodle was, was there. So, uh, that, that's pretty cool. A lot of people yeah. asked for that and on Jay. We're, we're two for that. two. Yep. Two for two for cool stuff today. Yep. Yep. All this, you better yeah, uh, be ready. Let's, <laughs> let's see if we can make it three. Uh, yeah. Young gentleman that we've had on the show before Alice Smidgens. Welcome to the show again, Alice. Thanks, Richard. It's great to be back here. Uh, we love having you here, but now you're not technically an Onshape partner, although you have an app in the App Store. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah. In reality, I'm an intern at Onshape, but I do publish things on the App Store. So currently, I'm working on a bunch of utilities that are both sample applications for developers to learn how to make Onshape apps, and they're useful little utilities for end users of Onshape. So it's kind of essentially being an internal partner of sorts where I build out things the way our partners would, document all the things that we could do better, make documentation for partners. And at the end, there's also some benefit to the end users of having some helpful little utilities. Nice. Well, I think uh, I think everybody already appreciates all of the work that you've done here at Onshape as, as an intern. And, and I'm sure people that watch your YouTube and check your Instagram and you know follow you around the internet and see some of the amazing things that you do. Uh, but today we're going we're talking about your utilities. So uh, why don't we give you a chance to show off a few of these? Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start with the one that's already in the App Store, correct? Yeah. 
So first I'll be talking about Reference Finder. So yeah, so some quick overview of Reference Finder. Um, so the problem that Reference Finder sets out to solve is that you have a lot of data and discussions scattered across a lot of platforms if you're any engineering company. Um, I was doing some research last summer about how companies approach engineering, how do they manage their engineering process, that sort of stuff. And if I talked to 10 companies, I got 11 answers about how people do things. And there's just so many tools flying around um, where people have important data. So what Reference Finder sets out to do is to solve this issue where you're tracking some tasks on Trello, others on Jira, some technical documentations on Confluence, but then other stuff's in Google Drive. You're talking about it in Slack, et cetera. And there's no really quick way to figure out, okay, what do I need to do next? What are the latest updates about this project I'm working on? And where are the resources I need to get going? So what Reference Finder does is it basically automatically finds references that you've naturally put into all of the tools that you use. Um, so it kind of streamlines your workflow that way. So there's no extra stuff to install in the other applications. Um, there's no manual process to link something back and forth. It just naturally looks at where you're discussing some project in other platforms and links to that in Onshape. And it does so by looking for where you've dropped Onshape uh, links, so like URLs in other platforms, and it looks for the document ID. Um, so this is really powerful because it means that no matter where you put this link, maybe it's in a Google Doc, maybe it's in a Google Colab notebook where you're doing some analysis, um, it could be a ticket in Jira, it could be a card in Slack, uh, sorry, in uh, Trello. All these places where the ID appears, they'll be pulled together. So what does this actually look like to end users? I did the slides demo time, just a reminder in case I forget if I get too excited with all the slides and <laughs> business synergy discussions. Um, so are you ready for a demo? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So say I'm one of the members of this underwater robotics team I'm on, and I want to go and see what's the information I need to know about our underwater robot. So I can just go in and click on our underwater robot model right here, right from the documents page. And on the right side, I have this little icon over here. Um, it's the reference finder icon. When I click it, um, a bunch of cogs start spinning and it starts talking to a bunch of different services. And I instantly see it pull up. Okay, what are the cards in Trello that reference this? Where has this been discussed in Slack? What messages are mentioning this document? In Confluence, is there any documentation written about this? Jira tickets that are open, um, Google Drive documents or websites or notebooks or whatever else. And for any of these, I can just instantly click it and it takes me with a deep link all the way to the exact place where it was discussed. So for example, there's this card in Trello, validate crush depth with the updated pressure hold design. And I see as an attachment, as an attachment, the document itself. And all that I did to attach it was I literally just did command V or on Windows control V to paste the URL of the document. Everything else is automatic. So it's literally one click where in on tape, I just click the button on the right here. It wears its cogs a little bit, talks to all the different services, and it pulls up where it shows up, and that's it. That's it. That's so cool. I mean, how cool is that? You like literally just paste a URL in, and that's it, as long as the systems are connected and told about each other, right? Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of connections, so you might be wondering, okay, well, how did it suddenly get access to my Trello and everything else? Well, you do manually <laughs> granted access. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate how easy it is to connect to a service. So I'm going to click disconnect here really quick. And now it's cleared out all of the Trello data from my account. There's um, no Trello connection anymore. It's not aware of me using Trello. And when I click connect up here, it'll open up an authorization page on Trello where it says, uh, what's, the what's the stuff that we need to be able to do? And it basically needs to be able to read to your information on Trello to be able to search for stuff. And in this case, I can click allow over here. Um, it's going to take a minute to uh, propagate that information back, and it says successfully connected. When I come back to the tab, all of my Trello stuff is right there already. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, this is great. Keeps everything together. You, you're not going to miss a thing. You know, it's just like that uh, Aerosmith song. Um, it, there's like, this is incredible because if you're using any one of these products, you should be using all this as reference finder. Like that's what this is telling me right now. Just seeing this, like <laughs> you can, yeah. if you have Trello or Jira or Slack, which we all do nowadays, most on shape customers kind of work like that too. Um, this is, this is fantastic. You know, just, just having that at your fingertips just by a URL. Wow. And if you have any other platforms that you want to have requested, if you go to the Reference Finder website, so that's just referencefinder.net, um, you can go down here and you can see uh, which services are coming soon, uh, which ones don't have enough of an API right now to be implemented. And if you want some other platform to be on this list, you can go ahead and email this uh, email and it, um, I'll add it to the priority list. Nice. Yeah, those you got the top ones right there though. Yeah. Like those are what you know most people are gonna 
use. And I like how you call out, you know, some of the ones that don't quite have the right API yet to, to connect. So people aren't uh, knocking on the door, you know, for no reason. So that that's good too. Awesome. That's amazing. Great stuff. And that Thanks. is available now and available for free, correct? Yes. So to get it, you can go to referencefinder.net and it'll show you all the information that you need about how to get started with it, how to use it. There's a tutorial, all that sort of stuff. The source code will be coming soon. So it's gone through an extensive security review uh, at Onshape, the same review that we do for all of our um, official uh, functionality. Um, so it is safe to use. And the source code will be coming soon as an example of how to build a secure extension um, with the Onshape API. And this is the first utility in a series of sample apps, which basically the idea is it's a simple sample app. It's very singularly focused on one kind of task. Um, it's also helpful to end users. And it's helpful to demonstrate certain types of API functionality to developers, and it's free. So um, that's the idea. It's these simple free applications that help developers and help end users. You had me at free. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so that was great stuff there. Now you're working on a lot of other stuff too. Um, and gosh, we hope we can see a little sample of some of the stuff that might be coming up soon. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll show a couple demos of some upcoming App Store sample apps that I'm working on. Um, a disclaimer here is that these could still be pulled or uh, development could change direction or things like that because these aren't completely released yet. But um, they are demos, so they're kind of most of the way there to working. So the first one that I'll discuss is Import Accelerator. One issue is that in any CAD system, imports take a while to complete. Um, it takes a lot of time to translate all the geometry to something that's ready for modification with full parametric tools, et cetera. Um, so it would be really nice if when you're just trying to find, oh, which one, which of these 10 step files that I downloaded, which one was the right one, you know, what parameters do I need to set in the import, that sort of thing, if there's some faster way to do it. Uh, well, the Import Accelerator is basically what does that. So it's another one of those sidebar extensions over here where if I go and click on this little step icon over here, I can simply drag and drop a step file in. So for example, maybe um, I'm wondering, oh, you know, what was this vase that I downloaded? Well, I can drag and drop the step file in and it instantly shows a preview of it. And with this, I can also preview what would it look like if I imported it with the Y up option in Onshape versus the Z up option. Ooh. So it's this instantaneous click back and forth. You can already see what those parameters would look like um, without any extra effort. And if I wanted to check out another file, so for example, maybe I want to, um, Dragon, uh, what was the good project I was working on? Oh yeah, so there's this camera project that I was working on. We'll just import that and it says one third of a second. So this is not a full preview, this is not a full import of it where you can start editing the geometry, but this just gives you a quick preview of the graphics. So you can see, did I select the right file and do I have the right parameter set for the import? Yeah, sometimes it's all yeah. you need. Yeah. yeah, perfect. It's great. There's also another one is the designer lifecycle analysis tool that I've been working on for a while. So one issue is that figuring out the environmental and cost impact of some projects is really hard to do, especially quickly for a work in progress design. So what I've, what I've been working on is this quick tool where it gives you an estimate of um, an interactive estimate of CO2 usage, energy usage, water usage, cost, et cetera, based on the material and manufacturing process that you choose. Now this one's still a bit early in uh, the development, but uh, what it can give you over here on the right side is using our um, uh, feature scripts tables functionality is it basically gives you a summary of all the parts that you have in your current part studio. It gives you estimates of how much CO2, water, energy, um, et cetera, will go into manufacturing each of them. Now, these are still rough estimates, um, and you do need to go through a full life cycle analysis to get a good estimate of what it'll be in reality. But this at least lets you know, uh, relatively speaking, which option is more environmentally friendly and cost effective. It gives you information too. Like you can make yeah. contrast very quickly and easily and just get a better understanding of what your options are, even if. Uh... Even if it wasn't for like, you know, I, trying to think of like people, people can use this even if they don't care about making stuff green. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I'm all about that, you know, but it's, uh, this is like a good tool that can solve technical questions, right? You know, this is great. Yeah. So you can estimate how much stock you'll need to order versus how much scrap mass you'll have out of the part. So that already gives you some uh, estimate for what you might need to do on the purchasing side. Yeah. That was that was the column I was staring at was scrap mass. That's amazing. That's to know how much you're going to throw away. Yeah, or, at least well, a little bit hopefully of, uh, reuse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's amazing. And then the last one I wanted to talk about was model embedder. So this one, I think it's uh, one of the top requested things that people want out of Onshape is I want to just throw my CAD model into a website. So this model embedder over here, I have a Google site set up with the demo here. Oh, whoops, hold a minute, wrong tab. But right here I have, um, oh, well, I have an error. Okay, it's reloading. Too many things open on this computer. 
Um, but right here, I have a 3D model, and it's pulling this straight from Onshape. So if I were to update that model, OK, well, clearly my, my Mac is not having a good time with having this much stuff open. But this just gives you a 3D model that you can embed. You just give it an Onshape URL, and it shows up in 3D on your website. So that's another thing that's going to be hopefully coming quite soon as an app in the App Store. Steps. That's awesome. Very, yeah. yeah, very nice. I mean, it's yeah. just there to you know improve speed. You know, sometimes you just want to look at stuff. You know, and you don't need to work on something. You want to make sure you're working on the right thing. You just want to look at it. Yeah, you know, that's great. I love it. I love it. And that, or if you have a page where you're selling stuff, you know, you could add a configurable cab model. You already built it for engineering, so why not also provide it to the end user to configure what they want to buy? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you, Allness. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show and. You know, have you, uh, you know, completely blow our minds? So, <laughs> which he does well, I don't know. Every, I think... every single time he's on the show, my <laughs> mind gets blown. So, <laughs> we have to say that simulation stuff earlier. Oh man, that's amazing. We'll definitely use it for robotics when it comes out. And the purchasing stuff. Oh boy, we should have could have used that on our capstone projects. We had major shipping delays, confusion about where the heck did these parts that we ordered, where did they go, all that sort of stuff. So I can say, you know, well, the stuff I showed might be a little bit flashy. I can see the other two are incredibly useful for engineering projects. Yes, absolutely. And I brought in Oleg and Stefan back just to uh, to, to say hello. And, uh, you know, it, it's awesome to hear that all this. It's uh, it, this is real life stuff. It, it's it's great. And uh, I think that's all we have. To that is it, man. What a, what a great show. We saw some some amazing technology. We got to hear from our friend, young Alness. Uh, and I'm going on vacation next week, Mike. So, you know, I think there might be a, an on shape release coming up yeah. maybe sometime next week, right? We'd be around that three week time frame. So uh, you may have to fly solo or, or maybe get one of the one of the ladies to, to co-host with you again. Although they did such a great job on the other podcasts that I'm afraid if we give them too much exposure that we might end up out of jobs well, here. So uh, if if we're out of jobs, it's it's. The best thing for the company. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for, uh, for the next update. There'll be a lot of cool stuff. Yep. I'm sure. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again, everybody for being here with us today and for our listeners, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave your comments for us. Uh, we love hearing from you and look for our next live feed and look for our next episode dropping in a couple of weeks. Awesome. So long everybody. See y'all later. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.